Let a be a subset of the real numbers, and let lambda be a real number. Then I want to prove that the supremum of the set lambda a is the same as lambda times the supremum of a, as long as lambda is greater than zero. I also want to prove that the infimum of the set lambda a is the same as lambda times the infimum of a, as long as lambda is greater than zero. Then we'll prove that the infimum of the set lambda a is the same as lambda times the supremum of a, as long as lambda is less than zero. Finally, we'll prove that the supremum of the set lambda a is the same as lambda times the infimum of a, as long as lambda is less than zero. Okay, let's start with the first one. But before going further, we need to define a few things here. Sup of a is the supremum of the set a, and it is defined as the minimum upper bound of a. Next, we clarify that the term upper bound of the set a means an element m in R, such that m is greater than or equal to any element in a. The infimum of a, on the other hand, is the maximum lower bound of the set a. Similarly, we clarify that the term lower bound of a means an element m in R, such that m is less than or equal to any element in a. Finally, we specify what is meant by lambda a. This is the set of elements lambda times x for elements x in a. So with no further ado, let's prove the first one. We'll prove it by contradiction, ad absurdum. Our thesis statement is the following. Suppose that the supremum of lambda a is not equal, but is actually greater than lambda supremum of a for lambda greater than zero. This inequality will be denoted as star. Notice that the supremum of lambda a is, by definition, the smallest upper bound of lambda a. But in the star inequality, we just found an element in R that is less than the supremum of lambda a. This element is lambda supremum of a, and thus it must not be an upper bound of lambda a. Otherwise, it would be greater than the supremum of lambda a, since the supremum is always the smallest among all the upper bounds. Fine, but what does it mean in mathematical terms? It means that there exists an element that we'll denote as x index lambda in the set lambda a, such that lambda supremum of a is less than this element x lambda. This is guaranteed to be true, since lambda supremum of a is not an upper bound of lambda a. Let's call this relation the icosahedron inequality, just because it is a cool image. Okay, but if x index lambda is an element of the set lambda a, then by definition of the set lambda a, this element must be of the form lambda times x for some x in a. Do you see now why we call this element x index lambda? Anyway, using our icosahedron inequality now, we observe that lambda supremum of a is less than lambda x. Simplifying the two lambdas on both sides, we get that the supremum of a is less than x, for some x in a. In other words, we found out that there exists an element x in a, such that the supremum of a is less than this element x. This implies that the supremum of a is not an upper bound of a, since we just found an element of a that is greater than it. But wait a second, by definition of supremum, it is always an upper bound, as long as we are talking about the same set, in this case a. This is a contradiction. Alright, so we should go back to our original thesis statement and cross it out, because it's not true. 
let's try to alter this thesis statement and see if we can get it right this time. Say now that the supremum of lambda a is less than lambda supremum of a. Let's call this inequality diamond. Then it implies that, dividing lambda on both sides, we get that the supremum of lambda a over lambda is less than the supremum of a. Remember that the supremum of a is the smallest upper bound of a. But we just found a real element, namely the supremum of lambda a over lambda, such that it is less than the supremum of a. This implies that this element, the supremum of lambda a over lambda, cannot be an upper bound of a. In mathematical terms, there must exist an element x in a such that the supremum of lambda a over lambda is less than this element x. Now multiplying both sides by lambda, we get the supremum of lambda a is less than lambda x, which implies that there exists an element x index lambda in lambda a, defined as lambda x, such that the supremum of lambda a is less than this element x index lambda. But wait a second, if we just found an element in lambda a that is greater than its supremum, then it implies that the supremum of lambda a cannot be an upper bound of the set, which contradicts its own definition. Therefore, going back to our thesis statement, we conclude that it is certainly wrong. And so, if neither the star nor the diamond inequalities are true, then there is just one option left. That is, that the supremum of lambda a is lambda times the supremum of a, for lambda greater than zero. And that's the end of the proof. If you're enjoying the content of this video, please do not forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. Also, I remind you guys that we always put a PDF link in the description below so that you guys can follow in detail all the steps we do in this video. Remember, it's only by practicing by yourself that you're gonna get better in math. Okay, let's get back to the proof now. Let's prove the second result now. Namely, that the infimum of lambda a is lambda times the infimum of a as long as lambda is greater than zero. Let's prove it by contradiction as well. The thesis statement is that the infimum of lambda a is less than lambda infimum of a for lambda greater than zero. Let us be creative now and call it the underwear inequality. We should remind ourselves that, by definition, the infimum of lambda a is the greatest lower bound of lambda a. But in the underwear inequality, we just found a real number that is greater than the infimum of lambda a. This number is expressed as lambda infimum of a. In other words, if the infimum is the greatest out of all the lower bounds, and since we just found out that lambda infimum of a is greater than it, it cannot be one of the lower bounds of lambda a. Mathematically, we would say that there exists an element called x index lambda in lambda a, such that lambda infimum of a is greater than this element x index lambda. Again, we have the guarantee that this element exists, since we have just seen that lambda infimum of a is not a lower bound of lambda a. I know that I'm repeating myself here, guys, but I just want to be as clear as possible so that everybody understands it. Also, let us know in the comment section below if the pace of this video is good, if it's too slow or maybe too fast, please, we need feedback. Okay, so we'll call this result the icosahedron inequality, just as before. But since this element x index lambda belongs to the set lambda a, then it must be possible to write it as lambda times x for some x in the set a. 
Using this information in our icosahedron inequality, we find out that lambda infimum of A is greater than lambda times x. Now, canceling out lambda on both sides, we get that the infimum of A is greater than x for some x in A. In other words, there must exist an element x in A such that the infimum of A is greater than x. And finally, we notice that this contradicts the fact that the infimum of A should be a lower bound of A. Going back to our thesis statement, we conclude that our underwear was wrong. Maybe it was just inside out. Well, then let's try to invert it. Our new thesis statement is that the infimum of lambda A is greater than lambda infimum of A for lambda non-negative. Let's call this inequality the rubber duck inequality. Now dividing by lambda on both sides, we get that the infimum of lambda A over lambda is greater than the infimum of A. Again, the infimum of A is the greatest out of all the lower bounds of A. But we just found an element in R that is greater than the infimum of A. Of course, this element is the infimum of lambda A over lambda. And therefore, this element cannot be one of the lower bounds of A. This statement implies that there exists an element x in A such that the infimum of lambda A over lambda is greater than this element x. And this implies that there exists an x in A such that the infimum of lambda A is greater than lambda x. All we did here is multiply both sides by lambda. As a consequence, there must exist an element x index lambda, defined as lambda x in lambda a, such that the infimum of lambda a is greater than it. But this means that the infimum of lambda a cannot be a lower bound of lambda a, since we just found an element in lambda a that is smaller than it. This is a contradiction. Going back to our initial statement, we confirm that it's wrong. Thus, if neither the underwear nor the rubber duck inequalities are true, then all that is left to us is the conclusion that the infimum of lambda a must be equal to lambda times the infimum of a. Next, let's prove that the infimum of lambda a is the same as lambda times the supremum of a, if lambda is less than zero this time. At this point, you can try to prove it by yourself. It's a very good exercise, so I highly encourage you guys to do it, to try by yourself. Before doing this, though, notice the following. The fact that 3 is less than 4 implies that if we multiply both sides by, let's say, 2, the inequality still holds, but this time we have that 6 is less than 8, which is correct. However, what happens if we take the same inequality, 3 less than 4, and multiply both sides by minus 2? Well, we'll find out that minus 6 is less than minus 8, right? Wrong. And that's the point we're trying to make. In our case, lambda is negative, just like minus 2, for example. So, to fix that, we need to invert the symbol after the multiplication by a negative number. In this case, the less than sign becomes a greater than sign, and hence, we get that minus 6 is greater than minus 8, which is actually true. Great! So, we'll have to do something similar in this proof, because we're working with negative values of lambda. Our thesis statement this time is that the infimum of lambda a is less than lambda times the supremum of a for lambda non-positive. Let's call this one the fish inequality. This implies that lambda supremum of a is not a lower bound of lambda a, otherwise it would not be greater than the greatest out of all the lower bounds. In mathematical terms, there exists an element called x index lambda, which is just lambda times x in lambda a with x in a, such that lambda supremum of a is greater than lambda times x. 
To cross out lambda on both sides, which is basically to divide by lambda on both sides, would require us to invert the symbol from greater than to less than, so that we can get a valid inequality. In simpler words, we found an element in A such that the supremum of A is less than this element, which does not make any sense, since the supremum should be greater than all the elements of A. Contradiction found. Okay, so the opposite must be true, right? Let's try the thesis statement that the infimum of lambda A is greater than lambda supremum of A. This is our teddy bear inequality. One of the things we can do is divide both sides by lambda, and get that the infimum of lambda A over lambda is less than the supremum of A. Notice how we already inverted the symbol from greater than to less than, since lambda now is negative. So we just found a real number that is less than the supremum of A, which is the smallest of all the bounds of A. This implies that the infimum of lambda A over lambda cannot be one of the upper bounds of A. In other words, there must exist an element in A such that the infimum of lambda A over lambda is less than it. Now we multiply both sides by lambda and invert the symbol from less than to greater than. This implies that there exists an element in lambda a, denoted as x index lambda, and defined as lambda x, such that the infimum of lambda a is greater than it. This is a contradiction, since the infimum is supposed to be one of the lower bounds. Yep, the teddy bear inequality is false. Conclusion. If neither the teddy bear nor the fish inequalities are true, then the infimum of lambda a must be the same as lambda supremum of a for lambda less than zero. Finally, our last inequality. We want to prove that the supremum of lambda a is equal to lambda infimum of a once we know that lambda is less than zero. Our first thesis statement is that the supremum of lambda a is greater than lambda infimum of a. That's our pizza inequality. Just as before, this implies that lambda infimum of a is not an upper bound of lambda a. And therefore, there is an element in lambda a such that lambda infimum of a is less than this element. After dividing by lambda on both sides and inverting the symbol, we get that the infimum of A is greater than some element in A. This is nonsense, since the infimum is supposed to be a lower bound of the set. Now, let's analyze the opposite statement, the so-called atom statement. Divide both sides by lambda and get that the supremum of lambda a divided by lambda is greater than the infimum of a. This implies that the supremum of lambda a over lambda is not a lower bound of a. In other words, there is an element x in a such that the supremum of lambda a over lambda is greater than x. After multiplying both sides by lambda and inverting the symbol, we find an element in lambda a greater than its supremum. This is absurd. The conclusion is obvious. If neither the atom nor the pizza inequalities are true, then the only thing that is left is the equality between the right-hand side and the left-hand side for lambda less than zero. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one right here. See you there.